cancer. What do we know about the impact of exercise on cancer prevention? Cancer prevention and treatment. I mean, that's, that's I, I think one of the, you know, cancer. So we've been talking a lot about cardiovascular health. And as you mentioned, it's like the number one, it's the number one cause of death in the United States and a lot of, I think, most developed nations. Cancer is number two cause of death, right? Follows cardiovascular disease. And um, exercise is one of the best things you can do for cancer prevention and also for cancer treatment. In other words, like if you've been diagnosed with cancer, uh, which is probably where most people wouldn't, ex- when they, they wouldn't exercise, mm-hmm. they think, oh my goodness, right. I need my energy. I, you know, I need to rest. And in fact, I think a lot of oncologists for many, many years were advising against exercise because they didn't think they could. But as it turns out, you know, exercise, when when you, when you exercise, so many different things are happening. Um, so you're you're having inflammatory immune immune cell changes. So exercise can improve and increase the number of a type of immune cell that can kill cancer cells. So cytotoxic T lymphocytes is one of them. Natural t- natural killer T cells is another one. But also what you have to realize is that you know cancer cells cancer cells take a long time to form a tumor. If we're talking about solid tumors, like you know, so so not blood cancers, right? takes a long time to form a solid tumor. I mean, this is something that's like decade, like a decade. You know, it doesn't just happen Mm -hmm. in a year. I mean, it takes multiple years before you're actually forming a solid tumor. And so as you get that one cancer cell and then you get the two and then the four and then you get the eight and whatever, you know, as they start to divide, cancer cells are not like our normal cells. They're they're really wonky and messed up. They've got all sorts of abnormal things going on. They're they're what are called stressed cells. And it's it's um it's one of the reasons why chemotherapy works is that so chemotherapy is toxic, right? It kills normal cells too it kills cancer cells because cancer cells are in a way they're primed to die they're waiting to die but they've they've gotten mutations that have helped them override our our natural programmed systems that are trying to kill them or they evade the immune system or they found a ways around it right to die and so they're kind of waiting to die and they just need like a stressor to help push them over the edge which is kind of what a chemo drug does cuz chemo is toxic and so it's that push. Mm -hmm. Well, exercise also is a stress. And so um, when you exercise, it is a stressful thing on your body and the, and um you know you increase the production of inf- inflammatory cytokines while you're exercising but then you have this beneficial response this adaptation of anti-inflammatory cytokines so you have a, a be- net benefit of you know anti-inflammatory effect for example well when you're exercising um your normal cells are able to make antioxidants and anti-inflammatory cytokines and they're they're adapting cancer cells can't adapt um, and so exercise actually can cause them to die because they're so stressed. Um, that's one thing that happens. And so it's one of the reasons that you can sort of, you know, if you have a two, a cancer cell or two or 10 or 20, you know, the more you're exercising, the more you're likely causing your immune system to be able to find them by increasing those important immune cells I talked about that can help, you know, kill cancer cells, the more you can kill them directly from just the stress. Um, but also the cancer cells uh, have something on them called, they're, they're, they have um, mechanoreceptors on them, which our normal cells have too. Sense, they sense movement, basically. Mm-hmm. And as you exercise, your blood flow is moving, right? And so, um, again, it's another type of stress that kills the cancer cell, but not normal cells. And these are usually cancer cells that have that are in your vascular system, right? So these are called circulating tumor cells. And so those are the ones that, the blood flow itself, just the shearing force of it can kill because um, the cancer cells can't take that shearing stress, that shearing force stress. So that's a a very interesting way that exercise can play a role in prevention and also cancer treatment. And there's been a variety of studies that have been done now looking at people that have colorectal cancer or breast cancer and they engage in exercise. You know, these people are like, 40% 40% less likely to have cancer recurrence and 63% less likely to have their, die, from, die from their cancer. So they're improving their overall cancer outcome, right, just from, from exercising. And also there's been studies showing that people that are exercising that have been diagnosed with colorectal cancer and breast cancer, the two cancers that have been looked at the most in this regard. But um, 
they decrease their number number of circulating tumor cells, those those cells that are in that escape the primary site of the tumor, get into circulation to go take camp somewhere else, right? It's called metastasis, cancer metastasis. Um, well, if you can stop your cancer cells from metastasizing, that really improves your outcome as well. And exercise has been shown to to do that. So again, it plays a big role in in that as well. But then again, you know, exercise. You talked about prevention. There's so many things going on with prevention, right? It's changing your immune system. It's improving metabolic health. Uh, metabolic health is important for cancer as well. I mean, obesity is, you know, there's like 13 different cancers that are associated with obesity and everything from glucose and insulin to hormones. I mean, there's there's so many factors at play, you know, that I just, we could go These on and on. things are not independent of They're not other. independent, yeah, exactly. They're, they're all like, they're all you know, connected. It's, all, it's all connected. It's, it's interesting. I mean, it makes sense on one level, like everything that you said, like, of course we should be doing that. And I can understand why that would have a, a positive impact and um, in terms of like staving off uh, the progression of cancer. But on the other hand, I'm thinking like exercise induced stress creates oxidation, which, you know, my layperson brain is like oxidation bad, right? Like this is, this is not good for your cells and probably isn't good for cancer cells either. And the inflammation that is a consequence of uh, exercise, um, also inflammation, bad, you don't want this. This is not good for your, your health, right? But there's differences between acute and chronic. And I don't know, maybe you can kind of like, if anyone else is struggling with this, like me, you can kind of figure, you know, make that a little bit more clear. Well, that's exactly right. And so exercise is a type of what is called hormetic stress, right? So this is a type of beneficial stress. It does create oxidation. It does create reactive oxygen species. It does create IL-6 and inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokines. It causes inflammation acutely, but, but there's an adaptive response to that. Our cells are creating antioxidant genes like glutathione, like um, superoxide dismutase, like all these other genes that are not only dealing with that little bit of acute oxidation that you just generated from the exercise, that little bit of inflammation that you just generated from the exercise, not only is it dealing with that, it's it's dealing with the inflammation days later that's generated from just normal living, right? So it has a net anti-inflammatory and a net antioxidant effect. But as you mentioned, the cancer cells, they don't have that hormetic response. They don't have that adaptive response. They don't increase their antioxidant genes or their anti-inflammatory genes in response to the exercise. They can't. They are messed up. They are completely mutated and screwed up. And so they die. And that is the mechanism. Is the, that's the mechanism yeah, okay, by how okay. it works. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and it's it. it's part of the reason why even, um, so but Dr. Walter Longo, a mutual friend of ours, mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's shown in a, a few studies now um, what he coined is differential stress resistance. And he showed it in the context of fasting, which is also a stress on the body. And so um, the fasting itself, if you do that like shortly before cancer treatment, it also does a similar thing as exercise. It's differential stress resistance, right? It is, it is, killing the cancer cells almost selectively while causing the normal cells to have more antioxidant and more anti-inflammatory um, responses through that stress, you know, that stress response that's happening, right? And so that's also the same thing with like deliberate heat exposure from the sauna. It does something similar, right? There's, it, it, it acutely is like you get in the sauna, it's hot, you're, you're, creating reactive oxygen species, infl- inflammation, IL-6 is going up, but the net effect is you have more what's called IL-10. That's an anti-inflammatory that's lasting for much longer than that acute inflammatory response. So a lot of these types of you know beneficial types of stress, whether we're talking about exercise or um, fasting, or we're talking about deliberate heat exposure or even plant phytochemicals. So a lot of chemical phytochemicals that are in plants like sulforaphane or resveratrol or um, curcumin and turmeric, you know, these are all chemicals that are, you know, they have, a, they, they cause a little bit of stress in our body, but they dramatically activate stress response pathways like the NRF2 pathway, which is hugely beneficial and in increasing a variety of anti-inflammatory genes and antioxidant genes. It's that good type of stress, the eustress that's, that we're looking for. And that's exercise. That's something that exercise is doing. Setting aside uh, cancers of the blood, um, not all cancers are the same. Are there some that are more 
uh, resilient or and and some that are more kind of receptive to exercise in terms of like uh, you know the, the what we're looking to do here. It does seem like some of them are, um, and that's probably why a lot of cancers that are looked at are so breast cancer, prostate cancer, like the ones that are like hormonal related to, and also very related to like metabolism in general, seem to be the ones that are really looked at in terms of being uh, affected by exercise. And then colorectal cancer, colon cancer is another one that's been looked at a lot and seems to respond well to exercise. Now, I don't know about other cancers like um, brain cancer, for example. I would imagine it would be beneficial, but you know, there's just, I think there's a, there's a lack of data to really, to show that, but yes, cancers are different. You're right. I mean, so it's, you know, I get, I don't know that it's necessarily a sure thing, but I do, I do feel strongly that, you know, exercise is beneficial, like period. And it, it does seem to be beneficial for most types of cancer. 